So my profession was systems engineering, is systems engineering. My hobby was software. If you go back into my university days, I thought I would be the classic Dilbert. People have this wonderful complexity. And so I started to enjoy working with people. It w there was a point in time where I became aware that I thought one way and other people thought another. Because other than that, you wonder, why do I see things so differently than the other person? Not better, not worse, just different. And so I tend to view systems engineering and in COSI as a connector. And systems expertise alone won't solve the problem. I like to say that a, a wonderful systems engineer in isolation, no offense attended, is largely worthless. A good systems engineer in concert with subject matter experts working in harmony, they can change the world. Anyway, so let's start. I don't have this thing, unfortunately. No. I have to say, first of all, thank you for taking your time to talk to us. I do hope it will go to Inclusive Social Media and guys will let you know. Because Very good. what I noticed, it's like there are people at Inclusive which seem to be familiar. No? Yes. But yes. you know that we're growing mm -hmm. and new people come by and they say, okay, who is this guy? And everybody says, you have to know him. Why shall I explain you? Yes. And it doesn't work this way. Yeah. Which, it, which is at oddly, we want to think of ourselves as inclusive. Exactly. But then when you get to know your community and make those simple shorthand references, you accidentally exclude. Yeah. So thank you for taking the time to do this. It's great. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> so I, what I would suggest, I would really talk to you about what you did before. Yes. That is really interesting to me personally, and I think to the society as well. Okay. And then we'll talk about the views, probably the things which you care about today, like including making it in an open society. Yes. Inviting other societies to work with us. Okay. Uh, and then we'll start with the following thing. You live in the US, I assume. Yes, I do. And you came by to Sevilla. That's a pretty much long trip. So inclusive workshop, okay, that's an event, but is that what you always do? I have enjoyed the ability to connect globally. One of the powers of INCOSI is the U.S. has a particular systems engineering flavor. Europe, much overlap, but a fresh dimension. Australia, South Africa, et cetera. One of the great things about being part of INCOSI, and I recognize that I've got a, an opportunity many do not, it's the ability to connect both virtually, but also in person internationally and gain those insights. Okay. Uh, did, did you miss during the COVID the opportunity to travel to Europe and the- I missed, I missed it a great deal. Okay. Now, leading up to COVID, I had more and more travel to the point of it was starting to, to be a stress, more than 50% of the time traveling. But then during COVID, you started to realize just how useful that face-to-face -face is and I hope in the post-COVID world, we figure out when do we use hybrid because it is more convenient, more economical, more, more ecological, but there's never a replacement for face-to-face -face if you can make it happen. Okay, got it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, talking about um, travels, I think I will go back to the past if you allow me. Please. Some people don't like that, but that's a really interesting thing. Um, is it Vitech? Vitech, you call it. Right? Vitech, yes. How come? How did you decide to? I mean, like in general, I cannot imagine a person is sitting and I suddenly want to create a new company. How yes. does this work? So I consider myself an, an accidental entrepreneur. Okay. So I was in my master's degree study, my, my post bachelor's studies in the US. I was working on a computer aided tool to support systems engineering, but I thought I was on my doctorate path. Mm -hmm. What I discovered was two things. One, I love the intersection of systems and software engineering. And two, I'm more of an applied person than a research person. And so I took my master's thesis, which was the predecessor to Vitech, and created the company and released the software and spent 29 years building the organization and the software solution. So very much an accidental journey Mm -hmm. but a very rewarding journey. Wow. 
did it start as a as a kind of garage thing oh, yes. where it's like two guys three guys how did it work it was very much a garage thing. Okay. And so I said that, so my profession was systems engineering, is systems engineering. My hobby was software. Mm -hmm. So I was the initial developer. I took the software up to a particular maturity, largely through the thesis work, finished it off. And then my first employee was my father. Oh, wow. I hired him about six months later. He became the president of the company the outward facing person because he's a career systems engineer, a big name in the industry. I was the in-house developer. The third person hired was my brother who was an operations manager. And it was very much garage shop out of the house for the first couple of years and then slowly built organically. It was a garage shop at the end, but that was, it's an enjoyable part of the journey. It's a difficult part of the journey. But the ability to work with family was unique as well. Yeah, I can imagine. Though that was a family business back then at the beginning, it, right? It was a family business. Yeah. So I, I had the pleasure of working with my father for 18 years. Wow. Which is very unique in this day and age. Five years into the company, my wife joined. And she led the testing part, the quality assurance part of the organization, okay. while I led the development and then ultimately led the organization. So yeah, it, it had a family dimension but also not a family dimension because it was professional in the organization, family outside, but you always knew the joys and the challenges. And I, I think that was healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I wonder though, you say you're a kind of techie guy, right? Yes. Originally, yes. but to manage or to, and to create a company, it's like beyond managing. You have first to create it. Yes. I would assume you can reuse some engineering knowledge, but it's like soft skill stuff. Like, how did you learn that? Learning by doing or really? Very much learning by doing. And so again, I said I'm an accidental entrepreneur. If you go back into my university days, I thought I would be the classic Dilbert. Okay. I would be the very technical engineer in the cubicle, designing the rocket, etc. And I take great joy in that. But I had a couple experiences in university that said, people have this wonderful complexity. And so I started to enjoy working with people. And then how did I learn it? Well, I learned, I, I credit half of my leadership development to the organization, the individuals within that organization, my father and others that I learned from, and the other half to Encozy. Encozy, I didn't use it this way, but it is a wonderful experimental space to learn and grow as a leader. And I, I made some mistakes here. I made them on a small scale where nothing was harmed. I learned from great mentors and, you know, I now I debate, am I a systems engineer with leadership skills or am I a leader with system skills? I don't honestly know, but there are so many common dimensions that I actually don't care which brand I have. They're both fascinating and valuable to me. Cool. That's really, really nice uh, bridge, John, as would say, or transfer to another topic. I wanted to ask you about how did you, or when did you know that there is an posy? I would assume it was back then an posy. Yes. Back then it was in yes. the U.S. National Council on Systems Engineering. So I actually joined in 1992. And I think I became aware of it in 1991, not long after the founding. I, you know, ac accidental seems to be this very fortunate theme that I can tie back to. The university that I went to for my undergraduate studies in the States had two of the legendary names and systems. It had Ben Blanchard and Walt Fabricate. Wow. And when I went there, I did not know that. I, I did not know their names. I did not know that they were at Virginia Tech. Okay. But as I'm progressing through my studies and I begin to look, where do I get my next degree? I realized I don't have to go anywhere else. They're here. And so not only were they legendary names in systems engineering, they were founding voices in Encozy. And so very, very fortunate. And that journey started back in 1992. I got more involved in about 97 at the Washington chapter. And then I've, I've been involved one way or another ever since. Got it. Uh, and uh, Blanchard and Fabrizky, they were your teachers back then and you didn't know that they are systems engineers or 
They so were just at the university. They were just at the university. Okay. So I studied uh, basically what I would call theoretical mechanical as an undergraduate, knowing that I wanted to be a systems engineer. My father was a systems engineer, so I knew that's what I aspired to. Uh -huh. And when I started looking for a graduate systems degree, Blanchard and Fabricki, I realized, were there at the same university, Virginia Tech. And so I was fortunate to have both as my uh, as my major professors for my thesis. Yeah, yeah. interesting. So interesting that you mentioned that in COSI or in COSI back then was a kind of um, prototyping testbed for you to learn soft skills and leadership and so on. Because I, in Germany, the nonprofit organizations is a widespread thing. You have everything covered by that, football games, whatever. Yes. And I always tell people, like, you have to appreciate that you take it as granted that you have this opportunity to try something, mm -hmm. including management, but not only. You can be right. an accountant, you can do some projects yes. without harming anything. Yes. No, that's a good thing. And that's how you how you started that in Pusi. What was your first, would you, would you say it wasn't project, it wasn't called project probably. Right. What, what have you done, like, first thing there? It's so interesting. In the U.S., I don't know if this translates to some of the national chapters. In the U.S., at least at that day, they were starved for volunteer leaders. Mm. Okay, And so largely, if you volunteered, you would end up with a position. Well, the first thing that I pursued was simply the treasurer for the Washington chapter. There was another candidate who stood for election, and I lost. Oh. And I should have lost. And, and so it's very, it was very an interesting start but what was so key is that president reached out to me and he said david i understand that you weren't elected but we would really like your voice on the board we think you have something to offer and i became involved in leading a tutorial program for the chapter a quarterly program bring in a teacher for a, a one one uh, day event they would teach requirements architecture etc and that's how i started the real interesting thing is that individual, as I completed my NCOSI presidency, the international presidency, I told the story. And I told him how important that was because it would have been very easy for him not to have noticed. Uh -huh. And I wouldn't have engaged. Who knows what the journey would have been? I remember that story. He doesn't. Oh. Because it was just his way of being. He saw somebody who wanted to engage and he created the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the great things I see across in Cozy. There are so many places where if a leader sees that somebody wants to engage, they go out of their way to make it happen. What's the name of that person? That was Art Peister. Okay. Yeah, he's uh, he's been, since he was the Cozy Director for Strategy, we served on the, the local board together and the international board together. How old were you? So I was... Well, it was under 30 at the time. Under 30. Yeah, under like 30. 30. I, I, about 28, I think, when I really got involved. That's so cool. So. Um, yeah, well, okay. It's interesting. And uh, <laughs> what about then? So you, you, you always had in parallel your Vitex story and the Incozi story. Yes. And it always lived together. It always lived together, yet separate. Okay. And so it's been nice because systems engineering is my love. Uh -huh. And so I'm able to to serve the growth of the profession while at the same time having, honestly, the commercial interests of the organization. But I tried to keep those divided to the degree possible. Mm -hmm. Even to this day, well, it's not an issue anymore because I'm not with Vitek. Yes. But when I would visit an organization, I would either be visiting under the Incozi hat or the Vitek hat. And every once in a while, they would ask me a question from the other role, and I would I would either say, I'm sorry, that's not appropriate here, or I would say, okay, I'm switching roles. Let me answer that. Because I, I think there are times, I think they can be a very strong piece together for both the corporate interest and the organization, but you always have to make sure that where the interests could be perceived to be commingled yeah, yeah, and yeah. conflict that they're not. It's a separation of concerns, as we call it, right? Yes, very very <laughs> much so. That's a great way to phrase it. By the way, uh, these specific terms we use and the thinking, actually, because I've noticed before I tried to apply that, well, we all always are learning, but still, yes. before I tried to apply systems 
thinking and afterwards it became difficult to talk to the same people I talked before. Who really? It's the same thing. Well, difficult in a sense, I kind of... Let, let me keep it like that. Okay. Did you feel it the same way? Like you know something and other guys don't think the same way? Can, wow. can you co cooperate with them still? Yes. So that's a, that's a fascinating question. Uh -huh. And I think it's, for me, it's different, but for a very, very different reason. So I mentioned that my father was a systems engineer. Whether by nature or by nurture, whether it was in my genes or because he shaped me, I think I was predestined to be a systems engineer and a systems thinker. And it's, it's because the way he chose to describe the world. He described the world from the language of interactions. Okay. And so he didn't talk about things. He talked about the connections between things. So I have always thought this way. Now, it w there was a point in time where I became aware that I thought one way and other people thought another. But because I was used to communicating across that barrier, mm -hmm. it was not a problem. But when I became aware of it, it was very, very powerful because other than that, you wonder, why do I see things so differently than the other person? Not better, not worse, just different. And once you realize that your look, you're taught to look across and that the interactions, interactions, and they're taught to look deep. And if you can bring the two together in harmony, wow, what power. It's true. But, but no, it's a, it's a different way of framing it, but you're exactly right when you make that transition and see it differently, I can see it being hard to communicate across the gap, at least for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's again kind a of perfect bridge to the topic of today, which yes. you care about, is trying to bring societies, not mandatory uh, formal ones, like mm -hmm. groups of people together to... Well, actually, I think the purpose is not to change the inclusive, it's just a tool. Right. Just a tool. It's a vehicle, yes. A society at the end of the day. Yes. But how how do you manage that? Because there are like IT guys, software guys, and they're more or less special in a sense, like right. we are. How, right. how do you think of that, bringing them together? So it begins with the right mindset. Uh -huh. And I said a moment ago that we look at things differently. We're, tra we're taught to look across the breath and across life. And others are taught to look deep. And if we see value in both, then we have a chance. If we see one as dominance over another, then we have a problem. And so I tend to view systems engineering and INCOSI as a connector, a technical connective tissue. And the value in that, the power in that is, again, we're not superior to anybody else. We are equal or in fact supporting. I need, if I'm a systems engineer, I need your expertise as a human systems engineer or a mechanical designer or software engineer or a reliability engineer. I don't know what you know. And only by bringing your perspectives together can we solve the problem. Same thing's true with Incosi. Incosi has systems expertise, but we're not the only ones with systems expertise. And systems expertise alone won't solve the problem. I like to say that a, a wonderful systems engineer in isolation, no offense intended, is largely worthless. A good systems engineer in concert with subject matter experts working in harmony, they can change the world. And so Incosi needs to be that same technical connective tissue, recognizing the value that other organizations bring to the problem, and we can change the world. Yep. Thanks for that thought. Uh, let me, well, I know that there are specific <laughs> concrete things behind these thoughts, like yes. what can be done together after you invite guys from other communities and you talk and you share the vision, what are the vehicles you can bring that to the world after yes. you agreed upon that? Uh, so I, I think the biggest thing when we bring people together or organizations together we can have wonderful aspirations, but if we don't have a concrete mission or vehicle or initiative, then nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. And so it could be as simple as 
framing an initial body of knowledge or knowledge artifact that exposes both organizations to an intersection and overlap of concepts. It could be holding a joint event that helps people outside of those two organizations see something different. It could be starting to, to tackle one of the UN sustainable design goals from the perspective of systems and asset management and, and logistics and putting together an initial framework, not a solution. We're not going to solve it alone. But if we can identify just something tangible that people can get their hands on and see progress from, because don't, isn't that ultimately what we're about? If I can see progress in six months, 12 months, 18 months, they'll keep coming back and back and back if there's a reward. If it's wonderful dialogue, I enjoy the dialogue, but it'll eventually just evaporate. Perfect, perfect. I think that will be a perfect like formal ending of our uh, interview because you perfect. invite guys to do the things together. It must not be on our platform. That could be their platform. That could be a new platform. Correct. The thing is that we know that there is something we can achieve together, but not separate of each other. Yes. Yeah. Nice thing. Let, let me let me after we formally finish that ask yes, you a couple sure. of another questions like less homo. Um, how do you prefer to, to 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 use your your free time if you have one? <laughs> Is it systems engineering related? Is it not? So. So much of what I do is either systems or leadership related. Okay. And so if you look at my bookshelf, you'll find some fiction, but you'll find a lot of what I call kind of pulp culture leadership books okay. on communication, on change, on, on topics such as that. Outside of that, uh, I'm a huge in the U.S. College sports are a big thing. It's university sports. Yeah. And so I live in a university town my university, my own university, I'll watch that. And outside of that, I'll, uh, I'll run and play pickleball these days, if you've ever heard of pickleball. It's Have you heard of dropping a ball in the sun, though? No, no. So so pickleball has grown up in the U.S. recently. Okay. The way I, I tend to describe it is imagine ping pong or table tennis where you're standing on the table. Oh, wow. So it's, it's a smaller tennis court played with paddles and this uh, big plastic ball, but it's designed to be a little less athletic than tennis. Okay. A lot more enjoyable, and there's a lot of laughter and fun. So a little bit of athletics, a little bit of pop culture reading, and a lot of systems engineering. Interesting. I think there will be a couple of pictures popping up here, right, for such ignorant guys as myself. Who is not aware of that thing. <laughs> but let me recap it with the following one. Sure. Um, I think if you do one thing in a row, a lot of time, it is difficult to do that without a pause or without switching to another topic. That's why I asked you about your hobby at the end of yes, the day. Yes. Probably like completely switching the topic or the activity. Uh -huh. Um, do you feel that as well? I mean, are, were there periods of your time when you were dealing with a thing which you really love and appreciate like systems engineering, and then you feel yourself in the middle of probably not that deep and dark place, but okay, I'm doing that too much. I need to make a pause in the, yes. Mm -hmm. What have you learned? How do you like balance that at the end of the day? It's a, it's a great question. And I appreciate the way that you frame it with a time dimension to it. Yeah. Because I think one of the problems that we get in today is we talk about work-life balance as if it's a point in time. And I believe you're never in balance at a point in time. You're in harmony over time. And I consider my situation a little unique because I had the corporate interest, Vitek, and the Incozi interest, intersecting through its systems engineering and the family dimension as well. I always stayed within the same space, probably shifting balance a little left or right. And yes, after 29 years, I was fatigued, but it took me 29 years to do that. Mm -hmm. And, and I was at times I was working tremendous number of hours. You can imagine what you do through in cozy through GFSC, quite a bit of work at times a lull at others. Business, quite a bit, a lull. 
but I stayed within the same space. But work, outlet through and cozy, and family all mutually supported that space. And and I was very fortunate in that. Perfect. Thanks for sharing that. Very good. And I think we'll finish on that. I really Perfect. appreciate your time. I really appreciate it, Alex. Thank you for doing this. This is a wonderful service. Thank you. So thank you. All right. Very good. Very good. Let me take your right Sure. Pleasure. <laughs>